Hey, I'm Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. And we're the Rambling Reviewers, and today we're looking at episodes... 9 and 10. Of Legend of Korra. This is why Korra. I do that part. <laughs> 9 and 10 of Legend, Legend of Korra, Korra book, uh, two. Uh, book 2. Uh, the two episodes are called The Guide and Holy Fuck Iroh's Back. Also known as A New Spiritual Age. I like my title better because it more accurately describes what the fans were saying. <laughs> They're not going to refer to this as A New Spiritual Age. They're going to refer to this as Holy Fuck Iroh is Back. Yeah. Just like uh, the last roundup in my, my Little Pony is referred to Holy Shit Derpy is Canon. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, and some... Some minor little filler plot about Applejack. (laughs) Poor, I know, people get to the end of that season, they're like, there was no Applejack episode. Oh, wait, that was the one with Derpy in it, and we forgot. (laughs) No, there was the two-minute Derpy episode with with 20 minutes of Applejack filler. All right, all right, so we're going to skip that, because it's not all of your bronies. Um, So, let's start... you should be, because it's a great We'll start with the guide, and the, the main lesson... I got from this, and by this is this is Cora's trying to get into the spirit world, and uh, she's having trouble, and basically eventually gets there. And then the other plot is back at Republic City, where Mako suspects that Varric is the evil mastermind doing evil things. Right, and for you Mass Effect fans just joining us, there is a difference. Varric is an evil businessman. He is not the fish dog wolf monsters from Tuchanka. Yeah, definitely not. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? I'm guessing you're talking about... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're like space wolves. But anyways, not the tr- space marines, though. Right. And now that our random crossover references have been... <laughs> Exhausted for the episode? Not really. <laughs> oh, not even um, So, so uh, the big lesson I, I take as a writer from this episode is the importance... Of a varied vocabulary. Oh my god, they said spirit, spiritual, or uh, spirit spirits. E. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's spirit, spirits, plural, or spiritual. You put them all together 50 times. I counted. Yes, <laughs> like we, a, he did. I saw the I paper. I mean, I was making, because the first time I watched it, I was like, wow, this is getting annoying. And I watched it again with you. I'm like, I'm just going to count this time. And it adds up to 50, exactly. Yeah, it's. Um, they have no other words to describe the spirit world. You say know? magical. Say the, uh, uh, mystical, divine, you know, something. There's got to be other, and then particular things for it, like dark. Heck, there's lots of words for fairy or uh, not even fairy. Okay, sorry. Um, spirits in our world. Spirits. Uh, Fairies, the Fae, mm. uh, uh, mystic forces. Yeah, that sounds probably power. The interest, souls but... of those who have departed, or not. The... I mean, Ghosts, actually, that's not that's uh, how these demons, work angels, yeah. monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or or for specific things within it, like Ghostbuster if, fodder. Like, <laughs> like imagine. Oh my God! If the season finale is Cora failing, and then suddenly Egod, Ray, and Finkwood <laughs> just bust into the seed and put um, uh, Rava into the trap. I mean, not Rava. No, Vatu. Vatu into the trap. <laughs> yep. That would just. That would. I would watch every. I would pay them a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, no. That um, won't happen. But, like, imagine if dark spirits, for instance, are called, like, the Varani or something. And then you could be like, you know, the Varani are growing stronger. Vatu- Vatua. Or the Vatua. Yeah, that, that's a thing. That's a good word, yeah. Well, uh, and then and then it would, like, it would feel more real, and you would stop hearing it have the same two syllables, spirit, spirit, spirit. Over and over. God, I've read uh, fan fictions about the Turians from Mass Effect that didn't have this many inclusions of the word spirits, and they worship spirits as gods in there. Yeah. They didn't have this many inclusions of the word in in Mass Effect 3, and you fought alongside Turians as their worlds were being destroyed by wave after wave of endless mechanoid Cthuloid horrors. That, that would seem so- to be a time when you would be cursing and screaming <laughs> to your gods, a lot, and you, we we heard it like a thousandth of the time there. Yeah, yeah, fifty times here. I mean, the, one of the one of the the Heck, we have many words for God, and we only have one of him. <laughs> well, we're Christian. We we only have. Well, I'm Christian. Yeah, whatever. Sort of. Um, ish. It's okay. Moving on. <laughs> so so yeah, like one of the exchanges between Tenzin and Korra goes like this: is something like, you know, you uh, managed to what is it? Um, you whatever. You got rid of those dark spirits. You know, Unalak may be a jerk, but his spirit powers are no joke. He told you how to get rid of dark spirits. I can't even get you into the spirit world. Like, stop saying the same word every sentence. You know, or spiritual is not the same word. But you know what I mean? It sounds similar. The first two syllables. Um, and so it just got, you know, kind of annoying. Kind of? Um... And and, that, and especially when you realize there's two plots in this episode. The other plot has nothing to do with spirits. So it's it's 50 times within, let's say, 15 minutes that they actually spend on the Korra plot 
versus the other seven on the Mako plot. Which is remarkably dumb. So it's I, not I, remarkably I like, dumb. I, well, yeah. it's, it's just that, uh, you know, Korra's section of the episode... I don't know. You know what it feels like? Hmm. It feels like, uh, let's say the Power Rangers are getting ready to face um, uh, Lord Zed, who's super powerful. He's gained like the powers of Frieza from Dragon Ball, and he's like going to wow. destroy the entire universe. Yeah. And then half the episode is about Billy trying to sell enough tickets for a bake sale. <laughs> we don't so care about the th- bake there's sale. There's a contrast of weight, is what you're saying here. Uh, what I'm saying is, yeah. we don't care about the uh, about the part of the episode where Billy's trying to raise money for a bake sale. What mm. we're trying to do is... Uh, I don't care about Varric and his war profiteering. Quite yeah. frankly, that will cease to be an issue once Korra accomplishes the main thrust, which is right. to defeat Unalak right. and Vatu. Which is different if you, if you and want And then to, you yeah. can go back and say, hey, we found all this evidence... And uh, Varric is evil. Yeah, yeah, you could do that on your own time. Uh, so, but, and I understand uh, they they want to try to get uh, Mako and uh, Asami and Bolin in on this. But the, yeah, here's not, the th- there's a, there's two problems with that. One, the plot doesn't have much weight to it. Mm-hmm. It basically feels like um, it feels like trying to sort out a gang fight when. It's right, it's when to, something bigger is going on at the same time, is that what you just said? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it is, it's a so contrast trying to settle a weight. gang fight yeah. in the streets of Berlin while the allies are, <laughs> are smashing down the buildings. Yeah. It, yeah. Does, it just doesn't matter. And two, I don't like Asami, Mako, or Bolin. <laughs> so you're giving uh, me a stupid plot that has really no relevance to the overall story uh, arc. Unless Varric is actually Vatu in a human <laughs> shell, or he's like no, a T-8000. No. I, I'm convinced that Varric is innocent now, actually, because every single time he talked, it was clearly written to be phrased in a way that would sound suspicious, but not actually indict him, you know? He didn't say, like, and here's my evil plan. He just said things like, you know, I know that you know. And well, I was like, kind of like Varric. It is kind of Varric, but I'm betting he's innocent. And they just wrote it, you know, specifically so he could be like, no, what? I was talking about this other thing the whole time. And it will totally Although that be would be, be a really nice plot to us. Like, for the entire next season, uh, Mako's in prison and he's the bad guy <laughs> for the fourth season. What, what happened to the third season? Oh, because he was he's in prison, in prison right. for the third season. I thought season. he was the villain in prison, you know, like Vatu. Um, <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, I it would wouldn't it be great if if we felt like, for instance, uh, somehow everything's going to come down to a big battle with forces and stuff, and it's important to get like some armies and you know support and whatever. And if we don't have that, we're going to be screwed, and even Korra wouldn't be able to deal with everything. So it becomes important to I don't know, deal with some profiteering and maybe rally support and get some people to work together that hate each other, and these three characters could do something Heck, important. That was one of the plots of Mass Effect 3, and yes, I know I'm bringing <laughs> that up a lot in this review, but, I mean, granted, the Crucible element wasn't that great, and it could have used some work, but See, the I Mass Effect... I played su- Mass Effect 3, so I don't even know. But the the story concept itself was really a good thing. Uh, get all these various factions that are mm-hmm. at each other's throats to work together in order to fight off a bigger enemy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it doesn't look like we're going that route. No, it's, uh, I was going to compare it to Lord of the Rings, whereas, okay, so Frodo and Sam have, like, the biggest deal, they gotta go destroy the ring, but you can totally see why Aragorn and the rest of the crew have to go, like, fight battles and freaking save people, right? Yeah. And in the end of the day, they actually help distract the orcs to help the, the mm-hmm. two of them march across Mordor. Precisely. So, it's part of the same big plot, and, and we also feel better about all the characters involved. Yes, <laughs> Precisely. But yeah. that, we're not getting that sense. No, not not exactly. Um, Varric so, has really yeah. kind of ceased to be any sort of a threat to the heroes. Was he ever a threat to the heroes, really? Well, they tried to, like, introduce some ambiguity by having him, like, do stuff, possibly, but... Well, he, as far as him being threatening, it was, turn my chair around, aha, I'm a Sami's business partner, but, but that's not really threatening yet, is it? No. It was suspicious at the time, but he hasn't, like, killed somebody or whatever. And uh, as far as we know, the him framing Mako, for, for one, I, I approve that move by the writers. I don't think he framed Mako. I think those two corrupt cops framed Mako. Well, see, I was getting to that. Oh, okay. Uh, one, I approve of Mako getting thrown into prison <laughs> by the writers. <laughs> just just don't drop the soap, Mako. <laughs> Why is that the only prison joke anybody knows? Um, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, because prison karaoke isn't too popular? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because of uh, 
Something. Okay. Prison rape is not cool, in case you were wondering. Yeah, no, it's not cool. That's uh, just the only joke I know <laughs> that's about. That's the prison. only joke anyone knows. Yeah. Um, okay, 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 okay. So. But, like, it's so, equally likely that those cops framed him because they already hate him for no adequately explained reason. Well, I, I'm sure. I figure that's going to be explained. But yeah, it'd be nice to, like, know. And a even, more. If, even if that does get explained. Who cares? Yeah, it's not saving the world here. It's yeah, not, it's see, he's not. They're not gonna go like destroy a Horcrux, which is like gonna be important to it. You know? Yeah, what I mean? it's, they're not destroying the Horcruxes. Yeah. They're not um, rallying the troops. Necessarily. They're not fighting the Reapers. They're not. It's. I mean, like, so you could say this well, is like Vulcan skull. You, honestly, yeah, I mean, we don't. I mean, we we like them. They're okay, but. <laughs> They're you know, there's a reason the why they don't just intercut between scenes of the Megazord fighting <laughs> against the monster of the week that you intercut to Balkan Skull doing Balkan Skull I mean, things. Now, now, to be fair, this could come together more so later on. But for the moment, it was just like, I don't know what we're doing here, you know. I mean, you, obviously, the, the southern resistance of eight guys is out there, and, like, I guess we're going to supply them eventually. You know, that would actually but have it, been much more interesting stuff to see than um, uh, Varys. Actually, yeah, let's let's follow those follow Korra's dad, and he could be, like, you know, gathering forces for the resistance. I could do that. Yeah, dude. And, and our char- other like Varys characters could help out, you know? They could all be together for some reason. I don't know. Have Katara in on this. I have Katari on this too. I have a whole separate plot in my mind that involves. But anyway, um, so but but back on the Korra side, the best part of this episode was Korra shows up at the Air Temple and he's like, or Tenzin's like, "What happened?" She's like, "Well," and spews out the entire thing that happened, and he just goes, "I, I knew, knew this it. would happen. <laughs> you knew this would happen. This was you knew know, yeah. this." <laughs> Would happen. That was just one of those I really nice gags. Just fascinated at what you were capable of predicting, Tenzin. <laughs> you predicted this. You know, this might have been something. Cora, I want you to know. Be very careful about Unalak because it's very possible he's trying to <laughs> to revive Vatu by opening both spirit portals. Right. And uh, it'd be extremely dangerous when trying to visit Fire Lord Zuko to get the assistance of the Fire Nation to free your tribe. Because it, there's a good possibility that the that a giant underwater dark spirit will <laughs> yeah. capture you and erase your memory. But then you'll find... But then you'll fortunately find a bunch of monks who have an inexplicably large herd of sky bison and will a help, bunch of magic will help water. dunk you into magic water and yeah. get your memory back. Yep. <laughs> fortunately, without any character development whatsoever. No! <laughs> Did you get all that, Cora? Did you get all that? <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, it was funny, though. It was, you, know, you let it go because it was funny. But um, So, Janora, I mean, I like the idea that Tenzin's daughter ends up having more of a role than you'd thought. Like, oh, that's a little I, I did unique. Like, you know? I liked I liked Janora out of all the kids best. Probably because yeah. she's the smart she always seemed like the smartest. The... And she and she wants to know what happened to Zuko's mom. Well, okay, <laughs> out of the other kids we had uh, the ugly baby who was two and I cannot stand child characters. Yeah. Who were that age. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh Ty Lee Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so Janora's cool. Uh I don't know what's up with the spirit world exactly, because it used to be the Avatar goes to the spirit world, right? That was always my impression. And now, if I may bring in the other episode, too, for a moment, uh, let's see. A P- Tenzin expects that he can go to the spirit world, despite not being the Avatar. Janora can go to the spirit world, and she's just, like, the Avatar's granddaughter. Uh, Iroh is in the spirit world, because... I think it's implied that... I always took that as he's dead and his spirit just lives there now. Right, but does that happen to everyone? And was that ever established before? You think people would say that at funerals and stuff. Like, well, he'll be all right in the spirit world. And then you think Aang would run into a bunch of dead people all the time. Hey, Aang, what's up? The Fire Nation killed me. Can you go get revenge? (laughs) (laughs) No, see, that would make a lot of things really easy. Like, uh, Aang goes into the spirit world. Oh, so you died here. Yeah, here's the layout of the base from what <laughs> yeah. I was determined before they cut my head off. Right. Well, you think if when Iroh... Although it did, they did foreshadow that Iroh had a greater connection to the spirit world. Remember, he could see spirits in uh, the first book? Oh. Uh, I mean, in, back in uh, could he? book yeah. one, right. Water. Man, that's been so long. All right, so that's something. Okay, yeah. But you did want a little better sense of, like, just what are the rules here, guys? I need to know... I. Was it ever foreshadowed that non-Avatar people could go there? Because Tenzin thinks, totally, I can do that. And you can't, but why can't, Why? Why do you think you can do that? You're not the Avatar. How? Well, how? I'm, I'm guessing yeah. the guy who decides that is Spider-Man, and he's just spiting Tenzin. <laughs> what? The guy who voices Tenzin? Uh, uh, same guy who played J. Jonah Jameson in the Spider-Man oh, movies. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> 
Um, I need pictures. Pictures of the Avatar. Yeah, pretty much. Korra, threat or menace? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> J.J. Jameson's like an angrier Stephen Colbert. You know, like, he is with just, a Hitler mustache. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I lo- but I love him so. He's just so much of yeah. an ass. <laughs> he's he's good in his part. Um, so yeah, it was all kind of vague. And then, okay, why are we going to the spirit world at all? This is probably the bigger problem, really. The idea is we have to get there to close the portal. Okay, but you just heard from Juan that they need to open both portals, and you only open one. So if you just take a nap for a couple of weeks, everything will be fine, right? Yeah, also, maybe if you go at the spirit portal from a direction they aren't expecting, I mean, we only ever see the wall from that one shot around the spirit portal in the south. Um, I presume it's a circular wall around the spirit portal. Yeah, that would just be more funny if it was just that one (laughs) section of the walls put up. No, yeah, but, I mean, like, he was bringing in his troops and stuff. It makes sense that there's, like, a big perimeter. But even so, she does do the Avatar state on a whim, so you'd think... That'd be great, you know, she shoves him into the spirit portal, closes it behind him, and then he's just (laughs) stuck there for her modic convergence. Ooh. That'd be, and then Vatu would just kick the crap out of him. Well, if he can. I don't know. Whatever. And uh, then we have evidence that Wan Chi Tong knows 10,000 things. Most of them are how to be an imbecile. <laughs> seriously. Uh, seriously, you know 10,000 things, and you don't know that radios are based off of electromagnetic energy. Right, right. I Dude, was, I knew that when I was five. He's an owl, Matt. <laughs> how many owls do you know? <laughs> well, I know ones that uh, know how many licks gets to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Three. <laughs> yep. I remember that ad. Oh man, we are showing our age. I don't know. Oh, well, that's that's been out for a while. It just gets recycled. I guess. All right. Uh, but but seriously, like no one brought him a, a book of the Avatar well, how things let's, work. Let's let's, let's like, get into with like elephant mammoths instead of nah, magnets. I I I was fine with that. I get that a guy who he currently lives in the spirit world. He probably knows yeah. lots about spirits and has not kept up too much on technology. Uh, I also like the idea of a guy who, you know, he'll let you access his library if you bring him new information. There's a certain, you know, mythic quality of things that run on their own rules, you know, mm-hmm. and not all about combat, whatever. But that gets into episode two. So they go to the spirit world for what reason? I don't know, really. Uh, um, then um, they fight Timon's evil cousins. Then they fight Timon's evil cousins. Now, actually, I really liked how the spirit world came out. I liked this whole episode i like thought oh, yeah have, i did it was one like of, uh, one, the of the best, best, one of the best one of the best Korra episodes, episodes. Uh, and this one actually had cora in it unlike the other one we just said <laughs> it was the best. uh i loved how the spirit world was so weird it's like okay and now you get spoiled by a giant sinkhole and now you're in the ocean and now you get spoiled by a giant crocodile monster and then as soon as you get swallowed you're in this other place with like a stream that does like a spiral corkscrew thing and I was like thank you this is like remarkably weird like it should be or like Sonic the Hedgehog or like Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> actually Juan's world was well no he was in the real world he just had spirits in it Juan's so that world makes sense. isn't that the one where um uh, the guy who played Shrek and his buddy go. Are trying to start a band. Or Wayne's something. World, I believe. Oh, I haven't even seen that. <laughs> yeah, I haven't either. Oh, all right. Um, so that I like that, and I also liked how the spirit world was sort of spiritual. It was. I mean, it was, it was definitely more along the lines of how I thought of the spirit world, which was more of fey. Uh, you know, like uh, the little folk it operates on its own bizarre rules and right, logic, right. but. You know, humans can't really comprehend them because they don't right. follow causality well, and, or something. Well, and I like the the whole. You know, basically, if you have a good attitude, then the world reflects that. If you have a bad attitude, the world reflects that. It's a pretty simple idea, but it's different. And, and isn't that kind of cool? And Cora turns into a little kid, and I love this. She actually goes through some character development by the end of the episode. Yes, she does. She learns she makes friends with these spirit monsters, and they, like, turn into nice guys. And you're like, she's doing a different thing. That's amazing. <laughs> And Iroh was there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Every, like I said earlier, yeah. everyone's going to talk about this part of With the episode. a different voice because the voice actor passed, sadly passed away. But, you know. Wait, wait, the second one passed away? No. The Wait, did he have two voice actors in the first series to begin with? Yes. Oh, well, I didn't even know. The first one was. Ma- the first one was a very famous voice actor known as Mako. Okay. In fact, Mako from. This guy's named after him, right? Yeah. Uh. And uh, actually, Prince Iroh was named after her, that Iroh, also as a tribute to Mako. Uh, right. Okay. 
uh, yeah, he was pretty famous. Uh, he did Aku. That Mako did the voice of Aku in uh, Samurai Jack. Okay. When did this? When did they change over to the second guy? I didn't even know. Uh, this. When Mako died. <laughs> I know in the story. You know, I can't remember. Sometime mid season two. Okay. Well, all right then. So it's the same voice then, and I didn't in even fact, know in, in there fact, was remember, a problem. <laughs> remember um, uh, Tales of Bossing Say when uh, Iroh was going around like um, uh, gathering stuff for that picnic thing, and then he sang that song to his lost son. Yeah. That episode was dedicated to Mako. Ah, that makes sense. All right. Yeah, so this is the... This is the second guy mm-hmm. who still hasn't... All right, fine. I thought I'd... I just knew that one bit about the first guy dying. I assumed he died between shows, so... Nope. I was wrong. Um, oh, also, apparently books are seasons. I said that in an earlier episode that they were packaging it differently. Apparently not. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, so I was, it was... It was nice. Uh, he gave some advice uh, with lice. I'm trying to think of rhymes no, now. do not rhyme. Um, uh, yeah, he gave us some advice, and he somehow had the sacred spirit tea kettle for some reason. Who else in the history of the world is going to have the most spiritual tea kettle than dead Iro? Point. Point. <laughs> Point. If it wasn't a kettle, I'd give it to you, but it's a kettle. <laughs> um, uh, what do you want to bet he just, like, it, it was held by, like, some a horrible cthulhu monster, and yeah. Iroh just busted down the doors and grabbed the kettle <laughs> yeah. and stormed out? Yeah, he yeah. Just, Cool. <laughs> you see Ko walk up, go up to the monster, and the monster is like 80 feet tall, he's just destroyed. Uh, messed with that roast tea, didn't you? Yes! <laughs> what was that? Uh, so, basically, Korra brings the baby bird phoenix thing to the top of this mountain. Okay, that bugged me, honestly. The baby dragon phoenix. Why do you need to mix that? You already have dragons in your world! That is fine with me. You do... What do you need? It's already a magical thing. It's a phoenix. Just say it's a phoenix, not a dragon phoenix. Nah. The hell, man. Whatever. Brings it to the top of the mountain, and then it merges with the other ones, and they make, like, this super dragon phoenix thing, which I thought was really cool again. It was all weird, you know? Okay, I have to admit it. When I saw that, I yelled, DNA Digivolve 2! <laughs> Is that a thing? They merge? Uh, yes. I haven't seen that much season Digimon. Two. Really? I thought you said were Digimon. Whatever. I saw Digimon in season one. The, uh, I the got up to Angelmon and... Uh, Angelmon and... And uh, Mega, the Mega, the two Megas that first showed up. Ah. Yeah. Okay, season two, they have DNA Digivolve. All right. And, which is where two Digimon fuse into a more powerful. Fusion dance. Ding. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways... So yeah, they and the spirit, Korra and the spirits go to the site of uh, the portals. The, the the tree of the tree of time. I actually liked it when they named that because you know what they would have called it had they been what they were doing last episode, the spirit tree, or the spirit spirit, <laughs> or the spiritual spirit spirit. Tree I was of like. Sp- I the just, tree of spiritiness. I just got to tree of time, and I was like, "Thank you. It sounds different now." <laughs> Uh, so they get to the Tree of Time, and... and yeah, those those monsters Korra befriended, they were a big help. Well, they, so this was confusing They were instantly me. converted. What was the point of that? Well, it was still neat that you got past them in the first place, even if they are going to turn again. Uh, but yeah, it was a little confusing under what rules they do convert. I was like, is Unalak doing that to them? Is Vatu doing that to them? Is, is it because Korra's angry? I thought that might be a thing. Like... She had to, like, meditate or something in the middle of this, and then they'd go back to normal, and then they could defeat, like, Unalak. Mm-hmm. And then it was said it was just like, no, I'll just fight. Kind of, well, she couldn't bend, but she tried to fight, you know. Although I do like how they explained it. Apparently, if you're a spirit, you're there in spirit in the spirit world, you, and you can't bend, uh-huh. that's because you're a spirit, not right. a physical presence. Right, so Unalak, he went through the portal. So, that made sense. Okay, so that explains a little plot hole that right. I was a little upset about back in... Um, Whatever episode that was. Uh, the Wan episodes. Um, yeah, well, I mean, he, he tried that diff... Whatever, yeah. He, he was bending in the battle of Ra- against Rava. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, I was talking about Unalak trying to open the northern portal from the inside using bending earlier on. And we were like, how does he bend if he's in the spirit world? Yeah. And he mentioned going through the portal, but to our minds that just meant you're in the spirit world. We didn't know it was like a different type of going to the spirit world. I think the physical body being present. Yeah, yeah, that's the main thing. Um, 
but uh, maybe bending works like chakra, where it needs both a spiritual and ment and physical component. Yeah, could could. So, but what happens is she shows up, and the things turn evil, and you're like, oh, I guess they do that. I get we. You thought you were the avatar. You can unevil fight. No, you can't do. Okay. Well, she she needs bending to do that. Never mind. No, but she was doing it without oh, bending right, as right, kid right. Korra, right? So it was just a little confusing. It wasn't terrible, but so so Janora's, you know, the freaking princess being threatened damsel in distress that's it yeah is the damsel in distress which, which is I'm a little really, cliche but you're like okay really whatever of, yeah it kind of makes sense you know she, she is, is a kid a, she's yeah. a little kid yeah. in a spirit world yeah uh so uh, it's okay open the portal or i'll kill her and Korra decides to open the portal and then does so and then unalak fricks her up anyway and it nearly kills her what the guy who lied to me several times tricked me again who could have seen this it would have been neat if she had like a little more of a plan you know like i don't know like there's some I... spirit in her pocket and she's like aha I'll, you can attack him from behind or something you know while i pretend groundhogs right <laughs> the freaking meerkats come yes. back ah <laughs> just like the little paws coming up out of the ground yeah. and dragging him down <laughs> Just drag down Bachi ah. while you're at it. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, but then, so here's what's was weird though. Yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of sad that I was thinking this, but um, like it, basically the consequence is Armageddon if uh, both portals are opened. So my thought was actually the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Yeah, that would be really dark though. And how many times have you seen that in fiction? Not where the person sacrifices themselves, which does happen. They sacrifice some other guy. I've seen that. I know, but how often? Uh, it's kind of rare. Yeah, so but I'm it's saying. pretty cool when it happens, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, the I can get the behind the idea though, because Juan sealed Vatu in the first place. Theoretically, you could let him out and then kick his ass again. And then, you know, save Janor in the meantime somehow. Uh, so I was like, okay, kind of, I get this. But what was really weird was she gets incapacitated by Unalak, and then the, the crazy Phoenix thing comes out from the sky and saves her. And I went, why didn't the Phoenix thing save Janora? <laughs> it's, the, it's the Appa dilemma. It's the... How does that mean? What do you mean? Uh, the same reason why most of the fights in Avatar The Last Airbender weren't finished instantly be by 32-ton Sky Bison landing directly on top of everything that threatened the party. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people could move out of the way of the Sky Bison. It's flying, and people generally don't look up. Yeah, I don't know. Like, that was a problem with Portal. They had, one of the reasons why they had graffiti saying, go here and look up, was because they noted, people generally do not look up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a little bit, I did like the moment at the end, though, where, I don't, okay, I don't, that's another thing I don't get, though, How, what, I wonder what conditions do you emerge from the spirit world? Because she I gets once... saved, and then she emerges. You think maybe Janora would take the same opportunity, of once she's back in the library? Oh, look, Unalak, meh, back to the real world. <laughs> Frick everything. <laughs> I mean, if you can do it at will... And if it's not at will, what is it? At no, random? No, no. Janora to buddy. Beam me up. <laughs> yeah. How long has she been able to do that? But yeah, since, I she, mean... since she watched all those episodes of The Next Generation. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can... I know. If you can emerge at will, you think they would do that earlier. If you emerge at random, it's quite a coincidence. Cora emerges when she does. And if you emerge under certain conditions, no one has mentioned what those conditions are. It's just like, and now she's back because uh, the episode's over and we had nothing else to do in the spirit world. Really? Because I would have stayed in the spirit world with my giant phoenix monster and started kicking seven kinds of shit out of... Unalak, yeah. yeah. And what happens if you try to push a spirit into the physical world? Oh, they should try that. Someone should tell... That would be like a great twist. Like, no, actually, we're just going to go through the portal. Fr like, in the middle of a battle, the freaking phoenix dragon thing pops out. No, no, no. I was, I was thinking, like, um, well, what happens if he took Janora's spirit into the physical world? Oh, I do not know. Maybe she would just, like, transfer, you know, wake up where she is, and mm, it just wouldn't do anything. Maybe. Um... Or whatever. I would love to see a spirit monster just show up through the portal. Oh, right. It goes both ways. Yeah. Why are the dark spirits trying to prevent... Okay, the first episode, why are the dark spirits trying to prevent Unalak from getting to the portal? Wouldn't you think they would want them to get to the portal? Wait, 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 wait. When? What? 
first episode, second season. Dark spirits show up and start attacking everyone. Right. I didn't think that was they were trying to stop Unalak from getting to the portal. I thought that was Unalak controlling them to freak everything up so he can get Korra on his side. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Although I do have to... Although I do still hate Unalak for his stupid, stupid lie about, oh, the Southern Water Tribe isn't spiritual anymore. <laughs> You know what would be great is if he was full of crap and the characters figured that out before anything happened. Like, why does he keep going on about this? That doesn't make any sense. And then, aha, you know. He was full of, the man who was full of crap was full of crap crap. the whole time. (laughs) Um, yeah. So, I did like how Janora brought up, why would you want to release Vatu? He's just going to kill everything. And Unalak says, oh, don't believe everything you read. Like, okay, so he does have a plan here. He's going to become king of the world or something. I don't know. Uh, Ooh, what if he's trying to become like a dark avatar where he he uh, fuses his own spirit to Vatu? With Vatu, Vatu yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder why Vatu would want to do that, though, when he apparently has the power to freak up the world by himself. But, yeah, he might Free try Free access it. to the human world? A uh, way to never die? He already never dies. Okay, a, a way to continue. And you fighting even after the harmonic convergence? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe he figures he'd be better off in battle that way. He was defeated by a human-spirit com- uh, combination. Yeah. So he could probably defeat the... But then he would still want to destroy everything, I would think. And well, There's plenty of ways to destroy things. And if he's just a spirit of destruction and chaos, then there's plenty of ways that don't involve just burning everything to the ground. Lex Luthor is a great example of that. When did he want to destroy the universe? Okay, well, he didn't want to destroy everything, but he does a lot of destructive stuff on his own. Right, and then and makes he has bank the power, of it. And he has the power and influence to, well, do whatever the hell he wants, and no one tries to stop him right. like Harmonic but, Convergence does. But Vatu was not the spirit of take over the world like Sauron style. He was the spirit of frick everything, destroy it down to the base atom style. Yeah, well, sometimes if a style doesn't work, <laughs> I guess and okay, clearly it, it didn't if he changes work. his mind, then true, he could do something else. That's and possible. he's had like ten thousand years to plan this out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's about it for the stuff, though. Yep. Yeah, it was, yep, that's it was about a pretty it. good episode, pretty the good second epi- one. Just stop saying spirit all the time in the first one. Get a thesaurus! Get a thesaurus! Get it from that library! <laughs> I'm sure they have a few thesauri. Or whatever. The thesaurus is... Alright, we're done. Okay. Well, I'm Sith King. And I'm Sonic Sons. And we're signing off. <laughs>